Lesson 108. Caring for our health and life. What are our duties respecting our health and life? We have the obligation to preserve our health and life. Man has no right to encroach upon God's dominion over life. Man created no human being, and he may not kill any human being, not even his own self. Our body is not our own. It belongs to God. We are bound to take care of it, and to do with it not what we wish, but what God wills. God created our body as an abode for our immortal soul. Very often the condition of the body affects that of the soul. If the body is unhealthy, the soul suffers. There is a wise Roman proverb, A healthy mind and a healthy body. However, we are not obliged to employ unusual means involving great expense or extraordinary suffering. We must exercise prudence in preserving our health and that of those under our care. Prudence would imply cleanliness, temperance, regularity, industry, and the use of remedies during sickness. Driving a car at excessive speed, crossing the tracks when a train is approaching, playing with loaded firearms, jumping into or out of a car when it is in motion, are imprudent actions, taking risks for insufficient reason. We have the obligation to do nothing which tends to injure or destroy health or life. It injures health to indulge to excess in eating, drinking, smoking, dancing until all hours, and vanity in dress. Some women and girls are gravely responsible for not eating proper food out of a desire to keep thin and thus be more pleasing in the eyes of others, to the injury of their health. Some men and boys from the, form the vice of drunkenness, taking so much of intoxicants as to lose their reason. Why is drunkenness a sin? Drunkenness is a sin because it, it injures the health and often leads to other sins. Let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in debauchery and wantonness, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and as for the flesh, take no thought for its lusts. By drunkenness one deliberately benumbs without just cause his reason, a precious gift from God to man. St. Paul said, The works of the flesh are manifest, which are enmities, drunkenness, carousings, and such like. And concerning these I warn you, as I have warned you, that they who do such things will not attain the kingdom of God. When committed publicly, drunkenness occasions bad example and scandal, and is often promoted fights and even murder. By habitual drinking, a person not only injures his health, but neglects the support of his family, and not unlikely also fails in his obligations to the state and to God. Drunkenness is a form of slow suicide. Drunkards do not live long. If a man would reason the matter out, he would never submit to the vice of drunkenness, which lowers him in the sight of God and of his fellow men. What is suicide? Suicide is the deliberate taking of one's own life. Suicide is a great sin. It is self-murder. The church denies Christian burial to those who knowingly take their own life. By this, the church does not mean that those souls are surely condemned to hell. Their judgment is in the hands of God. The church merely wishes to show public condemnation of such sins. One who commits suicide sins against God, who is the exclusive arbiter of life or death. He sins against himself by exposing himself to be plunged into hell, and he sins against his family, whom he leaves to bear his shame and perhaps to live in want for lack of his support. Suicide is the result of lack of religion. Experience teaches that as religion weakens in a land, the number of suicides increases. Suicide is usually committed by one who has gotten into trouble, or committed some great sin, lost his fortune, or cannot bear some disappointment. If we get into trouble, we should have patience and trust in God.
Suicide is the sin of those in despair, who do not believe or hope in God's mercy and ability to carry them through all adversities. Suicide is a sin of Judas. The suicide no longer holds that God forgives anything and everything when a sinner repents. He no longer holds that God is infinitely merciful and infinitely powerful, that he can draw good out of the most horrible evils. If one committed great sins, the remedy is not to commit suicide, but to repent. The thing to do is not to hang or shoot or poison oneself, but to cling to God in sincere sorrow. Even if one has to suffer contempt and disgrace in this life for his sins, he will only be preparing his soul for heaven. But if he commits suicide, he will only be preparing it for the torments of hell. Duel A duel is a combat carried out by agreement between two persons, fought with deadly weapons, usually before witnesses called seconds. Dueling is nothing else but suicide and murder combined. A Catholic is bound to refuse to fight a duel. Christian burial is denied to those who are killed in a duel. The duelist is guilty of a double murder. He intends to kill his antagonist and he risks his own life. The church excommunicates those who challenge or accept a challenge to a duel. The seconds and all who sanction a duel by their presence. Heroic death. It is not wrong, but highly meritorious, to endanger our health and life in order to gain everlasting life, or to rescue our fellow men from physical or spiritual death. Christ himself knowingly gave his life to save souls. Martyrs, priests and missionaries, doctors and nurses who expose their lives merit an eternal reward. Those who lose their lives rescuing others deserve renown. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather be afraid of him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it.